Hi YouTube, my name is Aiden and I'm going to be walking you through on how to build a big block shed. This engine's already been bored out, honed, it's going to be a 496 stroker and I'm going to show you the way I do it. Now, I know everyone's kind of got their own ways of doing things, I'm just going to show you mine. It's not saying that my way is the right way or the wrong way, but this is just simply what I do and hopefully you learn something or if not, I at least hope it's entertaining enough. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll get started with that. Because this block is fresh from the machine shop, we're gonna wanna make sure that we clean it really good as well. It could be leftover oils or even some, uh, since it was bored out, there could be some pieces of metal within the block. You just wanna make sure that you give it a good cleaning. I'm just gonna use some regular spray nine, water and some lint-free towels to kind of make that happen. I'm also going to be doing a really good job because I'm also prepping this for paint. Again, this is one of those things, you know, it's kind of by preference, but I want to paint it prior to assembly just to give it a bit of a cleaner look. That way all the bo bolts and everything will be exposed. I know a lot of people like to build up the whole block and then paint it afterwards, but this is just what I want to do, so yeah. I also want to just point out the way I have the engine stand set up for now. This is just to make it easier. Yeah, I'm a little bit taller, so this will make it easier for me to uh, spin and clean the engine. But uh, once I get to assembly, I'm going to balance this a little bit better because it might be a little difficult to turn or kind of top heavy. So the engine might just want to turn on its own and that's not something that we want, obviously, when we're trying to put it together. So for now, I just want to start with the exterior and just kind of try and get all that oil. You can see it's pretty bad in certain spots from whatever they did from the machine shop. But again, we want to get this nice and clean so that paint will go on. And, you know, with paint work, it's all in prep, right? So the cleaner the block is, the less chance that the paint's going to chip or flake off or any of that, right? We want good adhesion. So we're going to try our best to achieve that. Again, this is just a super clean, regular water, and then I'm going to use this to kind of dry as I go. The reason I'm using the spray bottles too is to try and keep any liquid out of the uh, cylinder bores, and the reason being is that um, when they're fresh like that, it's very easy for them to rust. So we're going to try our best to keep those dry for now, and then afterwards I'll probably hit this with a little more pressure. So yeah, we'll give that a go. You can get this uh, super clean and an actual spray made for, you know, cleaning engines. It's a very good degreaser. But for now, this is just the stuff that you get in a uh, in one of those big jugs. So, just in a spray bottle. So we'll see how this works. Just a heads up too: if your lungs are sensitive, you probably will want to wear some form of protection. But yeah, I've definitely. I'm, Sounds bad, but I've definitely breathed in a lot worse, so. Just gonna kinda let that sit on for a few seconds and uh, we'll see how it does. Let it do its thing, cause this does, uh, it's made for kinda cutting grease, so we'll see whether or not that achieves it, so. I'm also gonna get the back here where the bell housing is. Start now with the water, see whether or not that's helped any. The other reason I'm using spray bottles too is it's trying to just keep everything minimum, right? I am in the shop here and there's a, unfortunately there's no form of, uh, there's no vents or anywhere for the water to really go, so. I'm trying to use as little as I can and still do what I can. And what we want to do is just kind of take our lint-free rags here and uh, our cloth and kind of wipe it until the cloth comes out clean, just wet. That's how we'll know we've got all the oils and stuff off. Like if you see that there, that's pretty dirty. Just big on again, trying to keep things dry, right? A nice machine surface from the machine shop. You just don't want any rust happening. See here, it's pretty dry, but not bad overall. I was expecting a lot worse, to be honest. Here 
Here's the cloth, so it's actually not too, too bad. For the first pass. Still gonna try and dry them off just a little bit, get some of those hard to reach places. Now, of course, something like this, you're gonna have a bit of overspray no matter how careful you are, so. There is some stuff in the cylinder wall, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this another shot and then I'm gonna use a little more high pressure water. I'm gonna stand closer to the door to try and keep it contained as much as I can, but um, yeah, we'll go from there. This block's actually, it's cleaner than I expected, so that's good. I mean, they do wash these at the machine shop. I imagine pretty good, but you know, it's always nice just to kind of do things for yourself, right? Then you know. All right, so the next step's gonna be hit it with the spray nine again, then with a little bit higher pressure water. And um, after that, we're gonna go ahead and dry the block again, but I am gonna be using some compressed air to try and make that a little bit easier. So yeah, let's go for it. Do inside the lifter valley. For the record, I am not painting this. Some people do, but it's just not for me. The whole idea behind painting a lifter valley is uh, the oil won't be able to cling to the cast iron because it's very porous. So you paint it, it'll just be smooth, the oil returns a lot quicker. Keeps the oil cooler as well. People that take their time and do that kind of thing are usually building some crazy, crazy engines though. Sometimes different classes too, like having to use certain parts or something. Those are guys that are trying to squeeze every ounce of horsepower that they can out of an engine. But for this, you know, I'm just gonna build it to perform better than what's in the current vehicle, just a little 283. Should be a bit of an upgrade. And also just more for the sound too. It should sound pretty nice when she's built. All right, I've got my spray nine on there. Now it's time for the hose. Time to make a mess, good thing I got the squeegee close. I'm gonna use some compressed air to try and dry the block off half. And we wanna get these cylinder walls dry ASAP after. I'm probably just gonna use a regular cloth to do that because we're also gonna be, you know, cleaning the cylinders right before the pistons go in and everything as well. You want those as clean as possible. Again, it's very important to uh, dry these cylinder walls. Rust can form really fast. Now that we have those uh, dry, that doesn't mean they're not gonna rust. So the next thing we wanna do is I'm just gonna put a light layer of oil around the cylinder walls just to keep it from rusting. This here is just some regular 10W30. We're just gonna go ahead and coat the walls with that. A lot of people like to use uh, WD-40 for this step and that's fine too. Just not gonna go or last as long along the walls. Just make sure you get them nice and coated. Thin layers enough. Again, at this stage, you know, I'm not too concerned about whether or not there's stuff along the walls, as long as it's not rusting, because before we install the pistons, we're gonna be cleaning these again anyways. I 
also a word of caution, something that I see a lot but is rarely ever mentioned is that these cylinder walls are very sharp. I see a lot of guys do the same thing, they, you know, the oil the walls which are good, but then, yeah, just, it's very easy to potentially cut yourself. So just kind of keep that in mind once you're sticking your hand down in there. Just going to do one last look around, make sure that everything is coated for sure. You can kind of see the light reflect off the oil and it's, it's fairly obvious whether or not you've missed something. But it never hurts to double check. Sometimes something I'm unsure of, I just kind of, you know, hit it one more time. Certainly not going to hurt. And I'd say that's good. Now after washing the block, you know, uh, things look pretty good. But again, if we're, we're painting this, we want this uh, block as clean as can be. If you're struggling with some of the darker areas, like if you see up here, and just kind of the whole block in general, I'll show you just the difference that some simple brake clean can make. Just want to give it a quick spray. Kind of let it do its thing. And then because, uh, Brake clean too, you know, it's just it's made to eat through everything. So you'll, after this, you'll want to re-oil your cylinder walls, but let's see if we can lighten that up and see how it looks in terms of getting it ready for paint. I mean, that looks pretty good right there, but uh, we're going to do, just because we want to make sure, make sure, we're going to do our rag test and see how that looks. This is just the plain water. And as you see, it's more just the water marks there, so I think after this thing dries a little bit more, she'll uh, she'll be ready to start masking up and good for paint. Now that we have the block all nice and clean, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start masking it off. As I mentioned before, I'm going to paint this before assembling it. Personally, I just think it's a little bit of a cleaner, nicer look, so yeah, I'm going to mask it. And yeah, that's the next step of this build. I also want to point out that I did readjust the uh, the mounting plate for the engine stand. Reason being is it's just going to be easier to flip and uh, soon, yeah, we'll be heading to assembly, but it's also going to make it easier for if I have to move this engine when it's time for actually painting. And it's also probably going to come in handy when I'm masking here too. A good rule of thumb is to try and line up where the stand mounts to the plate with that final uh, freeze plug for the cam. And then your stand will be more or less balanced. So that's gonna make it a lot easier to work with. And it's not gonna be top heavy or bottom heavy, so it should rotate nicely. I'm gonna give just a quick spin here and you'll see what I'm talking about. See that? You can leave the stand on its own there and the engine's not going to want to move on you. And that's going to make it really handy. So the last thing you want is this thing to kind of, you know, use the own weight and flip against you. Nice and easy, just like that. One handy. Just in the middle of masking this engine here, I'm not really videotaping this part because it's, you know, it's easier just to, I'm not going to lie, it's a very boring job. It's easier just blast some music, you know, <laughs> avoid the commentary. But I just thought I'd, uh, I'd stop in real quick and I'd just say that um, what I am doing is I'm using the parts that are going on as kind of a guide for what I'm masking off so I won't have any unnecessary um, exposed parts. So... What I do essentially is I'll like I'll put the part on and kind of I'll put the tape under then I'll put the part over that and just kind of cut around the part so then hopefully if all goes good you know it's not interfering with the gaskets but it's also not gonna you're not gonna see exposed metal either. I guess that would be one of the pros to painting afterwards is you don't have to really worry about that but um yeah this is what I'm doing so. All right guys, so we have our engine masked off, so now it's ready for paint. 
after I masked it, I, um, I scrubbed it actually really good with a wire brush just for some of that surface rust. And I also used mineral spirits on the blog to make sure that it's all dry. So for paint, we're going to be using the Duplicolor um, engine enamel. It's got ceramic in it too. I am going to prime the engine first. I know some guys don't, but again, this is just what I'm going to do. It's going to help the color be a little more even, and hopefully it's going to help with that adhesion as well. Um, I'm not a painter by any means, so we're going to see how this goes. I have used this product before, and I will say you're definitely going to want to use some PPE with this. So, I guess that's it. And, yeah. The instructions are on the can. You want to apply three coats of each. Two coats are just going to be light, just kind of tack coats. Let it sit for 10 minutes. Same thing, another light coat. And your third one's going to be a little heavy. We're also going to do the same with the actual paint, and I'm only going to wait 10 minutes between primer and paint as well, so we're going to do six layers total. I know that sounds like quite a bit, but the engine paint is actually it's very thin. It goes on pretty nice, so we shouldn't really be getting runs or anything, unless you're holding it really close. So, yeah. We'll see how it goes. So as you can see, coat number one, again, is just really light. I know some guys prefer to skip the primer altogether. But yeah, just tack coat, right, just help it. I'm also gonna be opening the garage door in between coats because again, the stuff is really, you're for sure gonna wanna wear a mask when you're doing this. So yeah, now we wait. Again, 10 minutes between each coat and yeah, it should be good. It also says if you're gonna paint this, ideally to get every single coat on within the hour. I think it should be okay because we're doing, um, we're using both duplicolors, both the same product. You might run into issues if you use, like sometimes there's a bit of a chemical reaction if you're mixing paints. Like I know VHT is another very popular engine paint, but I'm just sticking with the duplicolor. The other pieces that I've painted before using the same method have all held up. So I have faith that this will be the same. But I guess time will tell. So just to give a little tips for anyone trying this at home, you know, again, it's really hard. This paint is very thin. It's hard to get runs. So you should be pretty good. Uh, first two coats, again, just tack, just kind of get something on there, right? But your third coat, when it says medium wet, the way I look at it is like, you know, if you see something that still looks a little dry, just make sure that there is color on there. As you can see, the engine looks pretty good. I don't think I should have any issues when uh, putting the actual color on. The color we're going to use is paint this engine. Its official name is Torque and Teal. This is by Duplicolor. This engine is going to be for a Pontiac Parisian, which, if you don't know, it's a Canadian Pontiac car. And uh, it just underneath the, the sheet metal, it's essentially a Chevrolet Impala. So I'm going to kind of be paying a little bit of homage to, to Pontiacs, but also just kind of be different, right? I mean, everyone paints their engine orange, so we're going to just step outside the box and be a little creative with it. The other thing, um, yeah, the torque and teal is very hard to get here in Canada. It's very expensive. I think there's some stuff in it that's really not good for you. So the primer is not as bad as this. When I painted the other parts, you know, I thought, oh, there's ventilation, the garage door is open, I'm gonna be fine. I didn't wear any protection and I was, I was blowing the color out for for a couple days afterwards actually. So this stuff is very brittle. You'll definitely want to um, use PPE when you're handling it. 
Yeah, Pontiac engines too back in the day were kind of a bluish color. I mean, General Motors also had blue, but Pontiacs were sort of their one-off, so this color I'm using to kind of pay homage to them. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm excited for it. The other thing too, you know, they say to wait 10 minutes between each coat. With the third coat of the primer, I'd say just kind of just really make sure. I'd say if, you, if something looks wet, just kind of do the glove test, right? And if it looks good, then it probably is. And yeah, we'll go from there. Hopefully this turns out. So far, so good. Yeah, that's all we can do. Time for coloring. because you know some guys like to wait, some guys rip it off right away. I think this is kind of the sweet spot for it. If you leave it on too long, you um you risk peeling the actual paint off with it. But on the other hand, you know if you peel it off too early, then you miss. Uh, there's the chance that you kind of get your finger in the paint or something. So I'm gonna wait till it's dry to the touch, and then we'll get the masking off this. Then that'll be we'll really get to see how this thing turned out. Hopefully the mask job did okay. I'm a little bit nervous, as you can imagine. You know, fresh from the machine shop. Don't want to mess that up. But all you can do is hope for the best, right? Nope. We'll see how it turns out. All right, so we have our engine. It's uh, pretty much dry to the touch. So we're going to start taking our masking off. And yeah, this will be the moment of truth. See how it goes. So far I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. The reason I plugged those other holes on the block here, these are threaded. So if you were to run a bolt through them, there's always the chance that it might actually um, just uh, take the paint off, you know, it might crack it. And you just want to, you don't want that to happen because then there's the chance it takes a little more, right? Some people also like to paint over the freeze plugs. Obviously I've opted out of that. I just think it looks, it kind of makes the engine block pop a little more. There's also a good chance that once the headers and everything's on and you know, this engine's in the vehicle, you might not ever see that anyways. But sometimes a lot of things in life, the devil's in the details, right? Some guys paint back here as well, but eh, I decided not to, just leave it there. So far so good. There is also something that's oddly satisfying about doing this. off and overall I'm uh, very happy with how this engine block turned out again I'm not a painter but I think she looks pretty good our engine itself is actually still clean too there's nothing in any of the cylinders And I think she's good. So there's our finished block, all painted. Now I'm gonna let it off gas and let it do its thing. 
But now we have the base all ready for assembly. So that'll be the next step.